distinguish leaders in the Islamic world. So I first met him in 1995. 1995. And he addressed our church students. I think during that time, you were not, I think, born. He came to meet us Madness. and he was street in Durban at a function for the tertiary students. He was the guest and he handed over the prize. So he's given his life to serving the community, especially the orphans, the widows, the aged, all over in the world, and it's quite well known internationally. And in the culture, in the Islamic culture, when guests come into our home, when guests come into the center, they are like <coughs> malaikas, angels that, that Allah sent. And secondly, from a hadith, we learn that when visitors come, evil, evil goes out of the house snakes and scorpions and so on. So Dr. Hani Al for us. So please <coughs> listen and try and learn one or two things from the book. All right. Alhamdulillah, uh, Ustaz Sama Rasulullah. Thank you, Brother Yusuf Muhammadi. I, my first visit to South Africa was in 1995. I came here to try to raise fund to help Islamic Relief in England or in UK. I went to Johannesburg, to Cape Town, and to Durban with Africa Muslim Agency and Brother Yusuf Muhammadi was in charge of it in Durban at the time. Every one of us as a student have to have a purpose in his life. We cannot just live without having a purpose for our life in our life. And this is very important. You want to be a soccer player? you will work hard from the age of seven or eight or nine. Like Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi, you know these names? Or, Mos or, Mo Salah, <laughs> or Mo Salah and others, okay? Or the Dutch one who play in, uh, what's his name, play in Manchester City? Or Mehriz, okay, you know all these names? Okay, you know, so those people work very hard from the childhood. Like Muhammad Ali, who won the Olympic at the age of 20, then three times worked against the upheaval of uh, the government who stripped him, or the, the union, the boxing union, who stripped him off the world championship because he refused to go to fight in Vietnam. And uh, at that time, and then he came back and won again, twice, three times. He had a purpose for his life. Or to Malcolm X, who was a bad, ba a bad, bad boy, very bad boy, was imprisoned, was a drinker, was a womanizer. But when he discovered Islam, actually, and became a Muslim, actually, he found the purpose for his life. And they became an icon for all of us. 
or Dr. Martin Luther King, actually, who was also a priest, wanted to work for the liberation of the black Afro-American to give them dignity, actually, and he had a purpose in his life. Or Nelson Mandela, who was in prison in Robben Island for about nearly 27 or 28 years, and actually worked all the way, actually having a purpose for his life. Actually, every one of us, every one of us, no matter what, should have a purpose for his or her life. Even if we don't have any resources. Chiji Farah, you know Chiji Farah in Latin America? What do you call him in English? Chiji Farah, Jivara? Huh? Oh, that's it. Say it? Jigovara. Jigovara. He was a medical student, actually, and uh, he went to see the area where the mine field in Argentina found how badly the mine workers were treated. And he was very upset as a medical student. He was from a medical, middle class family. The following year, he decided to hire a motorbike and to go around the whole of Latin America. Uh, and he discovered that why we are speaking the same language, having the same culture, having the same religion, having the same history, and we are divided. And they started to fight for the liberation of Latin America from the imperialistic power at that time. Then he came to Africa, spread his message. At that time, that somebody called Patrice Lumumba in Congo who wanted to liberate Congo actually, and put a currency for Congo, and actually, the, also the bad, evil power at the time killed him and divided Congo into two parts, actually, uh, what is the name of the city? Uh, Congo Kinshasa and Congo Brazzaville. But Lumumba, not because he was not a Muslim, should not stand up for him, because he stood up for humanity. Many people, Muslims and non-Muslims stood up for humanity because they had a purpose for their life. You cannot afford to live and let your life pass without having a purpose for your life. Ulama had purpose for their life. Sahaba had purpose for their life. Tabi'een had purpose for their life. All of them had purpose in their life for their life. That's why we remember them. Because they live to support and to protect and to educate and to save their communities. All those great heroes have purpose for life. Any one of you could become one of those people, better than Nelson Mandela, better than other people, as well as in, in Africa, or actually in Latin America, or any part of the world. So learning the deen is enough, but not good enough. Having hives is good enough. It's good, but not good enough. But having ilm is more important than having hafz. Hafz is the first step of ilm. Ilm is endless. Hafz, you can make the hafz three, four hundred pages of the Quran. Same for hadith. But knowledge is endless. Knowledge is endless. Knowledge is endless. You know, if you have, do you have a telephone, a mobile phone? Do you have a mobile phone? Do you know something called algorithm? Huh? Huh? Yes? Yes? Come here, Mr. Algorithm. Oh, stand up. Algorithm, you know algorithm? I know the word. You know the word. What does it mean? I don't know the word, but I know the word. Anybody knows what does it mean? Huh? You know algebra? <laughs> Algorithm is the name of the founder of Algebra. And there was a Muslim scholar called Al-Khawarizmi. Al-Khawarizmi is the one who invented Algebra science. Then from then, the word algorithm came, which is what you do nowadays in the apps and in the telephone and in <coughs> Metaverse. You know the Metaverse? Yeah. Top, you know, oh, and artificial intelligence? Yeah. Huh? Ah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. 
is fooling yeah. me, huh? I know. I, 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 know, know. I know artificial intelligence. <laughs> Artificial intelligence, emotional intelligence, all this. <laughs> this came from one man. He had a purpose in his life, for his life. And he was the one who founded Algebra. Algebra, which you study it in the secondary school, actually, with arithmetic and the others. Then he discovered the algorithm. That's what's called the algorithm. Algorithm now is the foundation of all the new technology that we are watching, metaverse, and artificial intelligence and other was one man like you, but he had a purpose for his life. Avicenna, which is Ibn Sina, one of the greatest scholars, medical scholars in the history of humanity. And his book, Al Qanun, was taught for seven or eight centuries in the whole of the world. Avicenna. Ibn Rushd, not only Ibn Rushd, the, the one who found it. The sociology science was from Tunisia. His name was, or is, was, 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 was what? <laughs> Forget the name. And, uh, uh, oh, Ibn Khaldun. Ibn Khaldun. Ibn Khaldun is the founder of sociology science. He found a purpose for his life. Another one from Andalusia. His name was Zahrawi. Zahrawi wrote an uh, 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 encyclopedia medical, medica, in 30 volumes. Everything. And he was the reference for Europe for centuries and centuries and centuries from his knowledge in pediatric, child, children medicine, surgery, instruments and others. He had a purpose for his life, in his life. All those great scholars and others had purpose for their life. Abbas of Nifarnas was the first one to travel with wings and to fall down to break his legs. Had a purpose for his life. For his life. <coughs> and he invented the observation room on the roof of his house to observe the movement of the sky, the, 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 the moon and the stars and the others. Every night he used to go up this room to look at the, the movement of uh, uh, the, sky, the, st the, the stars and the moon and, 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 and all this sort. All those people were not better than yourself. And you are not less than any one of them. You are not less than any one of them. But each one of them had a purpose in his life. For his life and for the community and for humanity. The more you work for community, the more that Allah will let you to stand firm and strong to help and save humanity. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the purpose in his life for his life as a as a teacher of mankind, a savior of everybody, the one who loved everybody more than anybody loves himself or herself. That's why, in his mission for the community or the humanity, he felt sorry. For anybody who died before becoming a Muslim. And he was praying for everybody to come to Islam. Because he loved everybody. Because he loved humanity. That's why Muhammad and his companions, وسلم, and his followers, tabi'in, 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 all of them had purpose for their life. Can any one of us stand here next to me and tell me what purpose I have for my life? Anyone can volunteer? Come on. Don't be chicken. <laughs> Don't be chicken. Who can come first? Come on. Okay. No, no, I'll, if they don't come, I'll just grab them. <laughs> yeah, go on. Be, be, be. Come on, stand up. And should not be shy like a woman. If none of you is standing up in front of the people to say what purpose we live for, we'll consider him is. <laughs> Come on, anyone? Come on, brother. You, 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 you. you. Uh, no, no, you, you, you. Oh, class. Okay. You are next. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What purpose you have for your life? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. I don't know what's my purpose. <laughs> huh? 
Not yet, okay. Come on. Speak up. Spell it out. What purpose you have for your life? The I have for my life is to be an IT specialist. Eh? IT specialist. IT specialist. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on. Bismillah, mashallah. Uh, my purpose in life, mashallah, I want to help the orphans. You want to help the orphan? Inshallah. Okay, thank you. Well, very good. Anybody else? It's not difficult. Yes? I told you, if you don't stand up, I'll... <laughs> huh? Yes, what purpose do you have for your life? Save humanity. Eh? Save humanity. Save humanity? Yes. That's it? Yes. How? Um. Um. That's a microphone there. Save humanity, okay. <clears throat> My purpose in life is that I want to change the world into a better place. In many ways. Like? <laughs> Give me one way. Like he so. wants to change the world and make the world a better place. Very good. Like supporting the poor. Supporting the poor. Yes. And giving? Zakat and dawah. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, no. Hey, what is coming? Come, Musa. <laughs> his name is Musa? Smith. Huh? Saad. 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 Yes. What purpose you have for your life? To become a teacher. Teacher? Teaching what? Which subject? English. English. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> His name was Zaid? Zizo. <laughs> what purpose you have for your life? My, my purpose in life is to, huh? to give dawah. To give dawah? Yes. To whom? To disbelievers. Okay, very good. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? This is the first step of having a purpose for your life. <coughs> Hazrat Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal was an orphan. Ahmad ibn Hanbal was an orphan. And his mother, when he was a young child, used to take him, to force him to come with him, to put him in the mosque to pray Fajr prayer, Jama'at. And she was putting at the back of his mind but I want you to become a scholar. To become a scholar. So the mother made him Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and he was the scholar. The purpose of his life was is to know the knowledge of Islam, to understand it, and to make the school of thought of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Muhammad al-Fatih, the one who conquered Constantinople in 1452. If you have seen the drama called Ertugrul, or Ertugrul, you remember the Turkish? G. G, G? Okay, G, okay, G says Esmin G. <laughs> he is, Ertugrul was the father of Ottoman. Ottoman is the one who established the Ottoman Khilafa, the Osmaniyin. Muhammad al-Fatih was one of the great grandsons of Uthman and Ertugrul. His mother used to take him to the walls of Constantinople, which is Istanbul, to tell him, I want you to become the one who brings Islam to this city. This was the purpose for his life. And at the age of 19 or 20, 21, Muhammad al-Fatih and his people actually managed to conquer Constantinople and bring Islam to this area. Has a purpose for the life. You have to think about the dream. You remember Malcolm, Martin Luther King used to say, I have a dream. I have a dream. And he was shot dead by the anti-humanity as much as Malcolm X was shot dead by the same group who killed him in 
America at that time because they were standing for the freedom of the Afro-American citizen at that time. Every one of us, every one of us must have a purpose for his life and must stand up hard to achieve it no matter how much it costs. Sometimes it costs life. But you have to have the purpose for your life. And don't be afraid of going to the difficult direction. Make Allah to be your supporter. Make Allah to be your guidance. Make Allah to be your provider. Make Allah to be the one who is with you 24-7. Camera, then I can take a photo with you as well. So I came here to be hosted by my brother, Yusuf Muhammadi in Durban. He was young, and he's still young. <laughs> yeah, he, he, had a, he has a very yeah, a small family, him, his wife, and his daughter. They used to feed me. They used to take me by the hand and to go from mosque to mosque, from center to center in 1995. Allah. See, we, we met again today when I was told that I'm coming to Durban. I said, I know some brother who hosted me in 1995. Even I forgot the name. Uh, everything, uh, every time I say, I say an Indian brother, he must, his name is Patel. Patel, Patel. Kisip Patel. <laughs> Kisip Patel. Everybody's Patel, huh? <laughs> but actually, when they told me Yusuf Muhammadi, I remember instantly the name of brother Yusuf. I'm honored now to meet my teacher, my ustaz, my brother, after 28 years. And can we have a hand of applause and say Allah Akbar to him? Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sheikh, my question is, what does it take for somebody to achieve, to be successful? How disciplined should someone be in order to be successful, in order to really achieve what is intended? First of all, you have to know what you want. Okay? That you want to teach the children is the beginning. Then you have to believe in what you want to do, whether you are Muslims or non-Muslims. Then you have to be very focused in looking after achieving what you want. Because your, your aim is like a seed. If you plant it in the right soil, in, in, in the right soil, look after it, it will become a fruitful tree. It takes time. It takes time. So you have to know what's your purpose. You have to believe in it. You have to be patient on it. You have to start advocate to invite people to join you. Because you cannot do it alone. When Muhammad وسلم, started, he was himself his wife, his cousin, and his friend, Abu Bakr, anhu, so Ali, anhu, Khadija. Anhu. Then everybody came, the, came around Muhammad to make the core group, to make your project, actually, instead of just done on, a, on, on, a, on the level of the street, to go out to the level of the city, or the town, or the country, or the globally. Focus, focus, Focus and be patient. Know that in your journey in the life, there'll be a lot of challenges. Failure and success. The more you fail, the more you try again. Don't let the failure in your life to stop you trying. Retrying, retrying, retrying. As I mentioned, and actually earlier on, Muhammad Ali lost the championship twice or three times and won it again because he wanted to be the greatest boxer on earth and used his deen to support him. I used his deen to support him. So never be demotivated. Don't let anybody to demotivate you. Be optimistic, working hard, know what you want to do, and making tireless work, and objective, and, and, and focusing on what you want. Even if you do not achieve what you want, somebody will come later on to carry on and finish what you have started. Keep writing what you are doing and leave this writing to generation to come.
Keep recording what you are doing. Keep teaching what you want to do. Keep passing the knowledge. Keep passing the experience to others. Because if you don't achieve, some of the young people, like the people in this room, could pick up what you say and be better than yourself. So your amal will be a never-ending story. And your mission be accomplished by other people. Like I said, our chefs, days as a student, how you spend his time? How I spend my time? Ordinary, like anybody. <laughs> I used to study when I was in secondary school. Uh, I used to study hard. Okay, at least 10 hours a day. When I was in the medical school in the last few months, it was more than 10 hours a day. Okay? And when I used to work uh, as a medical uh, doctor in, 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 in Great Britain, I used to work hard to learn a lot. At your level, at your age, the first stage you have in your life, I called it donkey ship. You work like a donkey. Donkey is a very hard working animal. Why? This is from the age of 15 to 35, 40. To learn, to gain knowledge, experience. If you are, your job is to work for five hours, finish the work in five hours, then work extra five hours to read, to write, to help the community. Don't stop working hard while you are young and have less responsibility. By the time of the age of 40, 35, 40, you have knowledge, experience. You start to become a wake-up caller. You know in Ramadan, actually, a wake-up caller wake people up for sihri, for suhoor. Yeah? So to, that means that you go to the community to try to wake them up and raise their awareness. Then after that, with the knowledge and the experience, and people start to listen to you, you start to become something called blending mixer. Blending mixer, when you get young people like yourself, with him, this man who has got about 20, 30 years of experience, and you come to him as to ask him for opinion, to help their community. He takes their ideas, put the ideas, change it into a project, and give it back to the young people to become a community product or a community project to build the community. From donkey ship to wake up caller to blending mixer to community builder. You will build the community with the product. You give it to him as an idea and he made it free as a product. After that, you become at the age of 60 and 70. You become prophesizing what can be happening to the community. At the age of 70, you have seen it 50 years of experience. So you can become a community prophet. It's not a prophet from God, but a prophet that can prophesize what will affect, what will have to the community. Because you have seen it over the last 50 years and more. Then, after becoming a community prophet, prophesizing for the future, from your experience and your knowledge, you become a clown. You want to become a clown? <laughs> no, you have to become a clown. You know why? Because at that age, you have the confidence to speak to the children, to speak with the animals, okay? To talk to the animals and children and bring them around you. So from donkey ship to wake up caller, to blending mixer, to community building, to prophesizing, to become a clown. Let the children to be around you.
Thank you.